Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and I love this polka dot top, and I wear it with black pants. I would like to wear it with taupe pants, because the polka dots on this shirt are not white, it's taupe. So I do want to find a pair of taupe pants to go with this, and I know exactly where I'm going to find them. I'm going to make them myself, and I'm going to use the pattern from the Golden Rule. The Golden Rule is more of a system that contains patterns. The set that I have comes with 280 patterns and the rulers to help draft out those patterns. And it's a lot easier than you think. We have the rulers. The system does come with this book with 280 patterns. It starts off with the tools you're going to need. The directions are in here. And in this binder, there are 280 patterns. So there's lots for me to choose from. The pants that I'm looking to make are going to be a straight front, so there's no pleats or darts. There's also no zipper in the front. The zipper is in the side. The back is also a very simple back with just a dart. So I do want this basic slim looking pants. So join me today where I'm going to show you how to draft out this pattern, which is right on the back of the page, and make that simple pair of pants. We will need the supplies that come with the kit. And in the book, right at the beginning, it explains the measurements we're going to need. And we will only need two measurements on our body and this will make every single pattern in the book. We need our bust measurement, and that's going to make anything from the waist up. For anything from the waist down, such as the pants, we will only need our hip measurement. So for the pants, I will only need that hip measurement, and I'm gonna turn this miniature pattern into a full-size pattern that will custom fit my measurements. There are some definite unique features about these patterns. First of all, we can read them in any language because instead of words, we use symbols. So when I look at this pattern here, I have an NN. If I refer back to a symbol chart, the NN refers to the blouse. There's also a little picture of a half-knitted sweater. That means that that shirt or the blouse is in a knit. When I look at that Z or Z, it refers to the trousers. That's what I want to make are the trousers. The numbers beside, in this case it's 155 by 150 centimeters, is telling me approximately how much fabric I'm going to need. There's no knit symbol beside the pants, so I know the pants are just a regular woven fabric. It's pattern 41. So when I turn it around to the back, I have pattern 41, and that would be my trousers. So I need to photocopy this page, and be sure to copy it at 100%. We do not need to change the scale. For this pair of pants, we have a back, the front, a pocket, and the waistband. I'm going to take away the pocket, so I will just need the back, the front, and that waistband. Between this and that special measuring tape, that's all we're going to need. We have two ends to this tape measure. One has this hard plastic piece on it with holes. The other side starts off with measurements, and the measurements are in centimeters. What we need to do is put this around our hips. And it needs to go around the largest part of our hips. And in my case, my measurement was 102. That 102 number is going to refer back to this hard piece of plastic. You're going to find that number. So in my case, it's 102. In the kit, we have this thumbtack, and I'm going to put that right in that 102 mark. So I have 102, and that pin is poking out. From that photocopy, I did cut out individual pieces. And I've taken that front of the pair of pants and have taped it onto a piece of paper. On every single one of these pieces, 
we're going to see an X somewhere on that pattern piece. That X is going to be X marks the spot and that pin is going to go in that X and put that pin in. So you can do this on top of a foam board or an ironing surface. So we have the pin and the X and we're going to use all of these numbers that come along the outside of the pants. That's how we're going to draft the size. We already have the measurement, which in my case is 102. From here, I'm going to follow these measurements. You will see a dot, a line, and a number. I have a number 16. I want to use the edge of that plastic, rotate it until I get to that line, line it up, then I'm going to smooth out this tape measure until I hit number 16. And all I need to do is put a dot. Rotate that tape measure until you come to the next line. Line that edge up. The next line is 13.5. I will find the 13.5 and put a dot. Rotate until I get to the next line, 15.5. We need to always line up that edge with that edge of that hard plastic, smooth out the ruler, and mark the number. So I'm going to rotate until I hit all of those marks, always smoothing out that tape measure and marking the dots. So I'm transferring the marks all the way around the outside of the pattern piece. Once all of those dots have been transferred, I'm going to be able to remove this and I can put this away. I'm going to be able to join up the dots with these rulers. On the back of this package, it does have all the information we're going to need to use those rulers. So I will be using the long rulers for the inside and the outside. The larger ruler I'm going to use to the inside. So this would be that crotch seam. I'm going to make my dots a lot bigger so you can see them, but you do not need the big dots. So I'll be taking the edge of this ruler and I'm going to match it up to these dots. And I'm going to be able to just take this ruler and rotate it until those dots match up. It really is as easy as rotating until we get those dots. When all three of those dots match, I can draw my first line. So I have that curve. I will also be able to follow the picture to help. I need that dot to go up at the top. I can use the straight edge for that, up to the top. So this is the front curve of the pants. I'm going to continue drawing those dots. This will be the top where the waist is. I will now need from that waist coming down around the hips. So I'll be using this long ruler. And we can see that part of the diagram right here. Just keep sliding it until we match up those dots. And I was able to match up the four dots, which is going to be the curve to the hip. So I now have that top front piece done. So I'm just going to continue to match up the dots using the rulers by just sliding them until those dots all line up on those rulers. I now have all of those dots joined so the front is ready. Once all these dots are joined up, I need to transfer any markings on this little pattern onto the big piece. I have an A and a B up at the top, so I've put A and B. Along the side is a zipper so I've transferred that zipper mark. The VM will mean the center front. From here, we need to add a seam allowance. And you can add whatever seam allowance you'd like. And you can add the seam allowance on the paper or add it right on the fabric. So you can see how on the back, I've added a one inch seam allowance. And I've also added the dart. And the dart was right there in my diagram. I had those numbers, I just drew those lines, and then matched up the dots. So I have the dart done. We need to put those pattern pieces on our fabric, cut them out, 
transfer any marks that we need to have transferred. There are many ways that we can construct a pair of pants. The first seam I personally like to do are these round seams for the crotch, both for the front and the back. When I lay my fabric out, I have the right sides touching. So as I cut out that fabric, it's already lined up for me. I have my right sides touching. I can pin and do that seam. So I'm going to sew that front seam and the back seam and use whatever seam allowance you have given yourself. The second seam I'm going to do are any darts or pleats. Because the zipper is going on one side, I'm going to just sew one side and base that side. I can now try that pair of pants on. Even though there's nothing sewn on the side, I can either pin or hold these center pieces to my front and back to see if this is going to be the right measurement. From there, I can just hold that over and see if I have an inch on the other side. There's no sense basting both sides at the same time. We can do one side and check it. You can also just baste to your knees. The basting's gonna come out. We just wanna set what that waist and hip measurement is going to be. Once we know that measurement, the rest we're going to be able to go forward. Once you've made this pattern once, you're gonna be able to make notes on the pattern pieces, and that way you can avoid some of these basting steps in the future. Once I know those measurements, I will be putting in my zipper. I will be putting in an invisible zipper and it's going to go on the left hand side. As a matter of fact, for this style of pants, you can even put it along the back if you put that in mind before you do that seam. So I'm going to put that zipper in the left hand side and then I'm going to be able to sew both of those side seams. We have that side zipper done, the back darts have been done and they've been pressed towards that center. All of these seams have been done. I would recommend doing a double row of stitching along this curve. And I personally like to have all of my seams pressed open. Now we can work on the waistband. We can do a waistband that is flat and is going to come inside. A small waistband, a large waistband. So this is going to be a choice that we can make. The pattern does have a waistband, so I will be adding a waistband on. I will need that circumference plus a little bit on the ends. And then whatever you want for that height, then you'll need double that height plus your seam allowance. The pattern does recommend 10 centimeters plus your seam allowance. I did a big two inch waistband, have hook and eyes to close it, that invisible zipper, the pants are done. The only thing left is the hem. I'll try them on now and show you what they look like. By making this pair of pants that has a flat front, no pockets, no zippers, just that little invisible zipper, it keeps everything flat. I don't have bulk underneath the shirt, so it keeps it a very smooth look. And it still has a nice look in the front the zipper you can't see and it has a nice look in the back. The smooth front pair of pants, it's a great pant to start with because it gives you a good fit. From there we can build on. We can do pleats, add a fly, add extra things that we want, but this is a very basic pair of pants and they always look nice and clean. So the golden rule comes with all of the patterns and the pattern I used was pattern 41, and that was just for the pants. We still had short pants and a shirt that we get out of this one pattern. We get the rulers so that we can draft out all of our own patterns. It's fun to design our own clothing. We can take simple things like this pair of pants and do all sorts of things with them. And just changing the fabric alone is enough that it's going to look very unique. So if you like clothing that is not off the rack, this is definitely a fun thing to look into. I'll put a link in the description, and as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe, and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. 
Bye for now.